Well, just because I'm taking a little downtime doesn't mean I'm not still here to bring you the top Big 12 storylines going on. I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports. We are covering the Big 12 from a remote location just for a couple of more days till I get back in the swing of things, get back home. We're visiting some family, doing all those things many of us do uh, this time of year. But there's still a lot of Big 12 stuff that I want to talk to you about here at Heartland College Sports. Hit that thumbs up button right below the video. We appreciate you doing that. Subscribe to the channel as well. We will be back in the studios coming up later this week. Thank you, as always, for being here. YouTube, the podcast, and, of course, our radio affiliates. So, since I am on vacation, one of my favorite things to do is read this, and that is the Phil Steele College Football Preview Magazine. It's a must-have I will be getting Phil on the show here in the month of August, and I'm looking forward to that conversation with him. But one of the best parts of Phil Steele's College Football Preview magazine is his stock market indicator. Now, I was talking to some guys on our staff, and they were like, oh, I usually skip over this section. Don't. It is one of the best parts of Phil Steele's magazine, and it's a must-read, and there's a lot of Big 12 conversation this year in the stock market indicator. So before I get to the big 12 teams involved, if you haven't read it, the bull market stock market indicator is basically a way for Phil Steele to figure out who is going to have a big jump in their win total this year, or at least who is most likely to see an increase in their win total this year. And what he does, it's a formula that I'm not going to try to explain here on the show because you're going to be confused. But basically, it looks at last year's results, and it compares last year's win total to the two years prior and says, is last year an outlier? Is last year a fluke? Or is that a sign of things to come, right? So example, last year, Phil Steele predicted there was an overwhelmingly likely chance TCU was going to fall back after getting to a national championship game in 2022. And that's exactly what happened. TCU did not even make it to, of course, a bowl game. So this year, who are the teams that he is bullish on? Who is Phil Steele bullish on seeing an increase in their win total? Three of his top four teams in that category are from the Big 12. The team that he's most bullish on seeing an increase in their win total based on his stock market indicator are the Cincinnati Bearcats. Number two is Pittsburgh out of the ACC. Number three is Baylor. And number four is Houston. Now, I love the fact that Phil Steele is high on these teams. I love that Phil Steele is saying to you know his audience, hey, three of his top four teams that he believes will increase their win total are out of the Big 12, Cincinnati, Baylor, and Houston. But I'm here to pump the brakes on this. Because as I noted, part of how this is basically done is he takes the prior year's win total, which was not good, obviously, for Cincinnati, Baylor, or Houston. And then he compares that to the two previous years and those win totals. And he comes up with this formula that suggests these are the teams that need to see increases in their win totals. And I'm just here to tell you, the thing that makes this very unique the thing that leads me to believe that in this year, in this moment, this stock market indicator from Phil Steele may not be the best way to project win totals is because we are comparing Cincinnati and Houston in particular, their first years in the Big 12 to two years when they were in the AAC. If we were comparing Big 12 years, I would be more open and willing to say, you know what? There's something there there. And there is because the proof's in the pudding. He lays out all the facts to show that Phil Steele's stock market indicator does do a great job projecting who's likely to see an increase in their win total. I mean, Cincinnati, based on Phil Steele, who's been doing this for 30 years, I'm looking it up here. Um, there is a 90 plus percent chance that Cincinnati will see an increase in its win totals from last year in the Big 12. But the reality is for Cincinnati, who went one and eight in the Big 12 and three and nine, can they get the four wins? Can they maybe get the five wins? Sure. Do I feel really good about it if I'm a Cincinnati fan or as a Big 12 guy just analyzing Cincinnati's schedule? I don't. 
I mean, yes, they've got a great game week one that they should roll in Towson. Then it's Pittsburgh. That's a toss up. Miami, Ohio, not easy. Never an easy game for any, you know, middle of the road power five team. They'll sneak up on you. And then you have multiple toss ups Houston, Texas Tech, UCF, Arizona State, Colorado. I mean, can they win those games? Any of those games? Sure. Can they lose all of those games? Absolutely. And then they close out with a really tough stretch. West Virginia, Iowa State, Kansas State, TCU. I, you sit here and you find me four wins. Confidently find me four wins in Cincinnati's schedule. I, I can't do it. You know, I, I can't do it at all. So Phil Steele's stock market indicator is bullish on Cincinnati suggesting they have the best odds in the country to increase their win total from three last year. But I wouldn't bet on it. I, I, I wouldn't touch it. You might feel differently, but there is no way that I'm going to go out there and, and lay any kind of heavy dough on Cincinnati topping that three win mark because I just don't see it as being all that likely. Not that it can happen, but I don't see it as being a likely situation for this team this year. In year two under Scott Satterfield, remember too, Phil Steele's model is not just comparing it to the AAC days, but comparing it to the AAC days with Luke Fickle. So that's number one. Then you get to Baylor. Now, Baylor is a team that last year found itself in an unlikely position going three and nine overall, two and seven in the Big 12. Baylor's a team that I'd feel better and do feel better about topping that three win number. But the problem for Baylor is they're playing 10 Big 12 games. Now, they're only playing nine games that count against the conference slate, but one of their non-conference games is against Utah. Think about that. They've got to play Utah in a non-conference game at Utah. Because this game was scheduled before Utah was in the Big 12, last year they played in Waco, and it was actually a pretty close game. Now they're going to Utah. So right there, you're saying that's a brutal non-con. Tarleton State, Air Force, okay, chalk up a couple of wins there. The good news for Baylor, and the reason I like this Baylor uh, projection a little bit more from Phil Steele, is the way the schedule shapes up right away. Colorado and BYU. It's entirely possible that Baylor is 4-1 and one out of the gates with a loss to Utah, in which case they've topped that three-win number. And then it's at Iowa State, at Texas Tech, home to Oklahoma State, home to TCU, at West Virginia, at Houston, home to Kansas. Even if they're three and two to start the season, which I believe they should be at their worst, they've got to win one game the rest of the way. It's not going to be easy in the Big 12, but in a league that's going to be filled with toss-ups, it's entirely possible that Baylor easily gets to four wins. And I think you've seen a very different Dave Aranda this year in terms of how he's handling himself, how he's handling his staff, and how he realizes this is a make or break year for him being a head coach at this level. I mean, it's not going to um, go well for Dave Aranda if he has another year like he had last year. No way, no how. And also in that top four, for bull market teams from Phil Steele is Houston. But Houston has the same problem as Cincinnati. We're comparing a Big 12 year to two prior years in the AAC. And Houston's schedule is also not favorable. They've got to play at Oklahoma in week two in the non-con. UNLV and Rice are the other games. So no FCS game. You've got a couple of group of fives in OU. That's tough. You've got a new head coach, ton of new faces, transfers in, out, the whole thing. You've lost some of your best players in the transfer portal. Um but if you want to look at this Houston team and be optimistic, you would sit there and you would say, they have four games. They technically only have to get to five to get themselves in a position where they're feeling good about their future and where Willie Fritz has this thing trending in the right direction. And I hope he can get there. But getting to five is a lot more difficult than getting to four, especially with the schedule that Houston's got lined up. Because when you have a team that has the amount of transfers that Houston has this year, you suddenly find yourself in a position 
where you need that thing to click right away. And it sometimes doesn't click right away. That's what I believe is going to be one of the downsides of teams that heavily use the portal. Their teams are not going to be gelled by weeks one or two when they can easily lose a game to an Air Force. They certainly can lose a game to an Oklahoma. So then you look at the Houston football schedule and you're at Cincinnati, coin flip game, week one of Big 12 play. You host Iowa State. You're at TCU. You're at Kansas. You're home to Utah. You're home to Kansas State. You're at Arizona. I mean, that stretch right there is against four teams, really five teams in six weeks, who all believe they should be playing for a Big 12 championship. And then you wrap up the season with Baylor at home and BYU on the road. Those are two of their more winnable games. So that Houston number of getting above four wins is likely to come down to the last two weeks of the season for the Houston Cougars. And uh, that is a very difficult spot to put the team in if you're projecting them to get more than the four wins they had last year, which Phil Steele feels like is basically a slam dunk. He's got them at plus six on his bull market indicator, which means uh, they have an 89% chance of getting to more than five five wins or getting to more than four wins, getting to that five win number. And I just don't see it. Now on the flip side, he also has the bear market teams that he would sell getting above last year's win total. And there are two big 12 teams on that list. And those teams are who the Arizona wildcats are at the top of the list. Of course, Arizona won 10 games last year and Phil Steele is projecting them. There is a overwhelming chance that this team is not going to reach that 10 win number from last year. They went 10 and 3 overall and they went 7 and 2 in conference play. They're number 1 on his bear market teams. So when you look at the numbers here, only 9% of the teams that had bear market numbers as high as Arizona's went on to improve their record. I'm looking at the Arizona schedule here. And I'm saying New Mexico win, Northern Arizona win. And then they have this weird game as well against Kansas State. That's a non-conference game because it was scheduled all those years ago. Then it's Utah, Texas Tech, BYU, Colorado, West Virginia, UCF, Houston, TCU, and then Arizona State to wrap up the season. So in conference play, are they going to go 7-2? and two? I find that unlikely. I do. I mean, Arizona feels like a nine and three team, an eight and four team to me. So I believe that Phil Steele is right when he suggests that Arizona is going to regress a little bit. I know they've got their big stars back, but still, brand new head coach, new systems to learn. That takes time, especially early in the season for a team like Arizona, even if you're returning the big stars. You have to look beyond that, though. I just don't see Arizona being that nine or 10 win team. They really have to get the 10 wins to improve on that record in the regular season. And that's going to be very difficult for them to do because, of course, you know, we're not going to sit here and, and uh, count the bowl game, which was a good one, beating Oklahoma. We like that, but is not going to be the situation that you necessarily want to find yourself in if you're Arizona going down the home stretch of the regular season. And another Big 12 team was on his bear market teams for 2024, and that was Kansas. Now, this is a different story to me, because remember how this is done. It's comparing last year's win totals to what happened the two years prior. Kansas won nine games last year, right? And we know that Kansas has been terrible for a very long time. So you can look at it and you can say, well, Kansas is due to have a regression here. But there's a couple things at play. One is Lance Leipold. Lance Leipold is such a beast and has done such an incredible job taking this con taking this program and turning it around quickly that we haven't really seen anything like this in modern college football history. It's one of the all-time great turnarounds. Now, how far he can take this team remains to be seen. It helps when you have the transfer portal and NIL, things that Bill Snyder didn't have back in the day at K-State and others, but it's still been incredible to watch. But because of a couple of things, one is Lance Leipold, and two the KU schedule. I don't think this is a good bet for a team to necessarily regress in a meaningful way. Kansas has 
because the Big 12 now has 16 teams. It's not like the old round robin days. Kansas has one of the easiest schedules in the conference. First off, their non-con is pretty easy. Lindenwood, Illinois, UNLV. And then you look at conference play. West Virginia, not easy on the road, but West Virginia, TCU, Arizona State, Houston, Kansas State, Iowa State, BYU, Colorado, and then wrap up the season with Baylor. I mean, I'm looking at four games that are toss-ups there. West Virginia, Kansas State, Iowa State, really three that you worry about. And then, you know, could they potentially lose another one? Sure. But even if they lose all three of those games, they're at nine wins, right? I mean, that that's that's where they're at. They're at nine wins. So this is one of those things that you look at and you say to yourself, um, I, even in a worst case scenario. Now, yes, Jalen Daniels could get hurt. The whole thing could collapse on him. Sure, I, I get it. And by the way, that nine wins includes a bowl game. So take that out of the equation here that went eight and four in the regular season. Um, I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, four wins are hard. To, they're hard to find four losses, I should say, on that Kansas football schedule. It's not easy to do. And that's why I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I am buying Phil Steele when he says, hey, this Arizona team is due to regress a little bit. I'm with you there. But Kansas, because of how unique the last few years have been, how bad they were. And remember, you're comparing the last year to the two years prior, how bad this team has been, how quickly Lance Leipold has turned things around. Plus, going from a round robin Big 12 schedule two years ago to now a 14 team schedule last year where you, you know, didn't necessarily play everybody to now a 16 team league where you're certainly not playing everybody and your strength of schedule plays a huge role in the success of your team now in the big 12 and in every conference for that matter. This feels like it's not something that is as likely to come to fruition for the Kansas Jayhawks. But if you have not read through the stock market indicator for Phil Steele, um, please go ahead and do that because it's an absolutely outstanding read that is uh, well worth your time. If you're a college football junkie, and obviously if you're here, that's what you are. I'm Pete Mundo. We are HeartlandCollegeSports.com. Thank you for joining us once again, doing this from a uh, remote location, taking a little vacation of our own as we get set to um, you know, ramp things up with the college football season right around the corner. Can't wait to be diving into it and much more with you here on the show as we, um, you know, are just a month away. It it is going to be here before we know it. We've got team previews up on the site. We've got, um, you know, predictions that are going to be rolling out on the site as well. There's going to be a lot happening at Heartland College Sports that you are not going to want to miss out on. And as always, get on the forums, okay? You're not going to want to miss out on what's happening on the Heartland College Sports forums because there's a lot there that if you are a fan of this league, you want to be on. We're already talking about road trips. People are comparing notes on their road trips. Hopefully, we'll be bumping into some of you guys on road trips, and you'll be meeting other fans on our forums on these road trips. So there is a lot to like about what's happening, and um, we're just grateful for you helping us build this community. Subscribe, share it with a friend. That's how we keep it free and hit that thumbs up and comment if you are watching on the video. I'm Pete Mundo. We are heartlandcollegesports.com. We so appreciate you being here. we got much more coming your way throughout the week, so make sure you're subscribed, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.